Did you try it? Lab 7? Did you run into challenges? Did you learn anything? Okay, let's take a look. Hopefully you gave it a solid effort and came out successful. But if you didn't, let's compare notes. Or if you did, let's compare notes. <laughs> Here is my solution for Lab 7. Now, what I did is, again, I like to put documentation up here in the comments to show how does this function work. So not only do I say I have a parameter that's a table name, I have a parameter that's a limit, but I also am returning an array of objects and I describe what those objects look like. So I have a display value property that contains the display value and a sys ID. This helps me think through the data structure before I get into the coding. Now, it starts out just like we did before. New glide record, I have an array called answer, I do the set limit thing and I do my query. But when we get into the while loop, I then declare an internal local variable OBJ. This is my generic object variable. And I do this inside the loop so that it gets reinitialized every time. I'm not dealing with old values. It says, once I'm out of the loop, doesn't count. Every iteration, it's a fresh new object. And then I populate OBJ display underscore value with recgr display value. We learned that from previous video. And then here's a hint. You could either do get value sys ID or do recgr get unique value that also returns the sys ID. I like using this one. It returns the distinct unique value. And if somebody ever changes what the sys ID is, maybe it's a new field name called GUID. I don't know. I don't have to care. I know that this method will take care of it. This particular API is going to insulate me from the intricacies of what that actually is. Is it ever going to happen? Not likely. But then I set my sys ID. Then I simply push that object into the array. So just like we were pushing the display value in the previous lab, this one's going to push an entire object into that array. That's how you build an array of objects. And when I get down to the end where I want to display this for debugging purposes, I call my function just like before, save the result in a list, hopefully it's a list of arrays, and then use JSON stringify to display that complex thing. So let's look at how that works. There it is. There's my output of incident 60 has this society. Why is this helpful? Because again, you may be say interacting with service portal where your server script goes and gets the list of elements you want to display. So you need to display a friendly term, the incident number, the display value, but behind the scenes, you want the sys ID so that you can link to that specific record or go retrieve additional information or go update that particular. This is the key to updating that record. Don't trust the display value to be unique. Reference the sys ID when you're doing those updates. Again, getting a little beyond ourselves in terms of, of glide record updates and service portal, but this is a very common operation for getting a lot of data and storing it to display. Maybe when somebody says next page, I go get records 11, uh, I got zero through nine, I get 10 through 19 on the next one until we're out. So I could do some pagination that way. I'll leave that for you to discover how that's done. That's my solution for lab seven. I look forward to getting into the advanced topics with you. Ooh, if you didn't think this was fun, there's more coming. See you in the next video.